I ready to hop on digital FPV hype train. It's Dmitry from FlexRC and today we are going to look with you at a new DJI FPV system. DJI recently released their digital FPV system for racing drones and I jumped on this hype train and purchased it for myself. So we are going uh, to open these boxes up and see what is included. Uh, try it and uh, have our honest opinion about it. All right, so I think as a first and the most important part of FPV is goggles. So I'm going to open uh, this box up. Uh, we are going to check them out and compare to some other goggles I have on hand. It comes with another box on top, so I guess it has some accessories. And here are they. They look like something from Base. Let's uh, look at the build quality of uh, these goggles. And right off the bat, I must say, they look uh, fairly premium. Uh, they look very strong. At the same time, I cannot say they're very heavy in my hand. Uh, we're going to weight them in a moment. Uh, the first thing that uh, I notice here, that the soft padding here, is like made from rubber or something the quality i think is very nice sort of uh, like a leather feel of the material uh, what i can say that you are able to adjust the distance uh, between lenses so you should be able to accommodate it for any kind of face and over here i can see right away they have uh, cutouts and i think it is for ventilation purposes as well as over here, I think this is the intake and here where it comes out. And uh, they also have over here uh, similar cutouts. I can see that it comes uh, with a micro SD slot here uh, at the bottom, as well as USB-C. And check this out. These hooks seem to be made from metal. I really like the feel of it, I must say. So far, I'm enjoying it. Let me see how they fit. Right away, I can say I have uh, quite a bit of gap over here. I can even look to the bottom. They are quite soft, the material is quite soft, so I cannot say that uh, it doesn't feel well. It feels quite nice, although for a longer time, if you're going to push on your face, I guess we'll see how it will perform. Let's see what else is in the box over here. Oh yeah, so we've got here strap. So we're going to unwrap it. Oh, it's not even strap. It actually comes with the pouch. Wow. And this pouch even has the soft surface inside. It's so nice. So we are going to put them like that inside and carry it around. Wow. This is quality, I must say. This pouch also well made. Hmm. <laughs> I'm quite impressed, actually. All right, so let's install. Uh, okay, seems uh, easy. Ooh, yeah, so it goes over here. Super easy to install this strap. I hope uh, it will stay well as well. Mm, yeah, feels like a nice grip. It'll be a bit of the challenge to adjust it to my face. But I guess once it will be adjusted, you won't have to worry about it anymore. Let's see. Yeah, it works right away. Yeah, I still get uh, some uh, light coming over here. I can feel how it pushes on my face over here. Hmm. I guess it pushes a bit more than I'm used to on my head. I can feel the weight of it. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I can live with that. Yeah, I can live with that. All right, let's see what else is in here. Okay, so two antennas in each uh, bag and it comes with uh, XT60 adapter. It goes over here, check this out. By the way, I just noticed it actually has a jack, so you should be able to use headphones with it. 
and listen to your quad. So it goes over here. All right, so here are antennas. So tiny. <laughs> Literally, I'm, I'm questioning why not to make them built in. All right, so it goes over here or like that. Yeah, so far I'm enjoying it. I think it's uh, very good. So let's put this antennas. All right. So yeah, now I'm actually like alien. Definitely alien looking kind of goggles. <laughs> let's uh, put it on a scale, see the weight of it. So I'm going to put it like that. And the weight is uh, 420 gram. Let's compare it to other goggles. I have here a Cyclop, uh, which uh, box goggle. I really like it, it's so cheap. And uh, in terms of size, uh, you can see it's uh, quite a bit bigger than what DJI has. Uh, so let's uh, see the weight of it. I feel it's lighter actually. Yeah, and it is actually light. It is uh, 415 gram approximately. So it is a bit uh, lighter than uh, DJI. And let's compare it uh, next to Amway Commanders. And Amway Commander is approximately 180 gram with antennas probably will be around 200 grams. So it's uh, half of the weight uh, of these goggles. So obviously it will be much easier uh, to travel with that one. This is what I like about uh, this kind of goggles versus box goggles. All the box goggles they usually offer much better quality of the picture. All right, so for now I'm going to put this away and we are going to look at the camera here. So let's uh, open the box, see what is inside. Ooh, yeah. So these are antennas. Wow, I'm quite shocked. These antennas, they look much smaller than I thought they are. Check this out. So this is very tiny. So it's nice. It's not, not that bad at all. Like, even the box itself it looks uh, much smaller than I anticipated, to be honest. And uh, the camera also fairly small. So the width of the camera is 20 millimeters. I'm surprised why they list uh, 21 millimeter on their website, which is uh, fairly confusing. Uh, the overall length of the camera is uh, 23 and a half millimeters and the height like that is 21 millimeters. I must say I like it. The width is approximately 38 millimeters and the length is uh, 44 millimeters with the height of 14 and a half millimeters. I think this measurement actually uh, matches what they list on the website. All right, so the weight of the camera with the air unit is 45.7 gram. Uh, looks really precise to what they listed on the website, which is uh, good news. Uh, but on the hand, it feels like nothing, honestly. It feels like nothing. All right, so as the next step, let's uh, open up uh, the box with the transmitter. All right. So we've got here transmitter with some paperwork, which obviously we don't really need. Some extra paddings. And yeah, I must say this thing is really heavy. It's much heavier than I expected, honestly. A little bit disappointed, I must say. I got used to use uh, X-Lite, which is really nice, and I can travel with it no problems uh, because of how light it is. All right, so I have got different kind of scales, which I believe should be able to uh, weigh this guy. So let's put it like that. Oops, they are moving around. All right, so the weight of it is 770 gram. Wow, I'm quite shocked, honestly, with the weight of this thing. Unbelievable, honestly. I had some hopes I will be able to travel with it, 
can get it all the time with me, but I think I will have to stick with x Lite. Although I'm hoping to like their FPV camera, which we are going to test next. Uh, in the meantime, let's uh, look a little bit more uh, at this transmitter, see what is in here. So this is, I guess, is the power button and check this out. It goes on, it seems like you can turn it on right away. So it comes pre-charged, which is nice. Uh, perhaps it is a bind button or something it has four free position switches record and back button is the same buttons they do have on the goggles nice flat antennas so yeah with this kind of antennas they should have uh, quite a bit of range i hope so at least and uh, these wheels over here as well as usb-c and uh, i believe it is a uh, jack for your headphones and over here it is obviously a uh, battery compartment oh yeah like this so check it out so this is the battery it comes with i think this button should release the battery yep like that uh, but yeah i must say this thing is heavy it's a heavy as hell as a next step uh, i'm going to hook a battery to the camera uh, charge everything and uh, we are going uh, to test the uh, quality of the video three days later are you freaking kidding me i was surprised to find out that the dji system is completely unusable before you will activate each of its components for example uh, th the way i found out about it is that i wired everything to my model and then in a beta flight I wasn't getting any channels movement, so I was like surprised how come maybe I didn't install something correct. I started to Google around and then to my surprise, obviously they had it mentioned in the documentation that you have to activate it uh, before you will use it. For example, transmitter uh, doesn't do anything really until it is activated. So the way you do it, you connect it to the computer and then they have special DJI uh, assistant program. And it's another confusion with it because uh, they use DJI Assistant for each of their products. And it's not one product which handles everything like kind of iTunes used to be for Apple, but they have a DJI Assistant for Mavic and whatever products they do have there. So Googling it uh, didn't really help me that much, especially because DJI FPV is a fairly new system. Same actually applies to goggles. Uh, with uh, goggles, when they are not activated, uh, you are able to see the picture, but you are not able to do anything. You cannot record, you cannot change any settings. And uh, same even with uh, air unit. Uh, they have, uh, if it's not activated, you are not able to change uh, the power level, uh, channels and stuff like that. So it's uh, fairly confusing. Other item I observed that with a transmitter, uh, the bottom side is kind of curved like that. You can probably see it. Uh, so it won't stand. Uh, you can balance it kind of, uh, but it's, it's not as stable. I wouldn't really attempt because then it can fall and break. Uh, but at the same time, I mentioned before that it is uh, very heavy and I still think it's not that light, but I guess it's not as heavy as I thought and it didn't really cause me issues uh, using it. So when I was using it, I felt fairly comfortable uh, and even now I don't even feel as it is too heavy. I guess my initial impression was uh, because I just used too much lighter x light transmitter. I also very much enjoying their gimbals, they are very smooth and precise. All switches are very close and easy to operate. Transmitter though has a very weird way of uh, turning it on and the way it works is that uh, you have to press once and then you have to hold for a couple of seconds and only after that it is activated. Same goes about uh, turning it off, you have to press once and then you have to hold it until it will uh, shut off itself. I mentioned previously that it didn't sit well on my face and I had a bit of uh, light leakage over here. I didn't really have a problem when I was outside. At the same time, I must uh, note that I dislike their lenses a lot. The problem is that screen is super wide. It's like IMAX movie theater, huge. And uh, 
the way it works that when you focus, it's either focused in the middle or it focused on the sides. So in order to operate menu, I had to either move these lenses to the sides or I had to literally try to kind of shift these goggles on my face in order to look a little bit to the side, uh, to the left where menu is. Speaking about uh, air unit, I was surprised that it wasn't as uh, huge and I was able to fit it without any problems in the Kaluga frame. The way I installed it, I put it at the front and I designed uh, some accessories, uh, the one which holds it in place, camera mount and also antenna mounts. And the weight isn't as bad uh, either, so it flies really nicely with uh, this setup and uh, I'm enjoying it a lot. Overall, I think uh, DJI FPV system is perfect for professional use and cinematic flying, uh, for which Kaluga frame is perfect as well. So they are really a good match and I'm going to fly it more and share more videos with you in the future. I think it's a perfect product for that. Speaking a little bit more about air unit, by default it is set to 25 milliwatts and I intentionally left it at this setting because I wanted to see how it will handle low signal and I didn't want to fly too far for that. The way DJI handles low signal is that a picture becomes pixelated on the sides while still staying sharp in the middle, uh, which is very nice because you are still able to aim where you fly. At the same time, if a signal becomes very low, then picture starts to freeze. And when it starts to freeze, you literally just see the same picture as you've seen before, like the drone isn't moving. Uh, which means that if you are racing and this will happen, you will definitely crash because you won't really know where your drone is. This is why I think that currently, uh, DJI FPV system isn't really suitable for racing until it will become standard. At the same time, it's perfect for freestyle, cinematic or professional application. I'm still exploring this product and there are a lot of things that I haven't tried with it yet. Uh, so I think I'm going to publish more videos about it as I learn. But so far I must say that I really love how it improves my FPV experience. It makes me much better pilot because I can aim better while I fly. I no longer fly like I am half blind in a rainy weather kind of pilot. I feel like if I want to go there, I go there because I see where I'm going. Uh, my confidence level increases a lot and I think this is what contributes uh, for me at least feeling as a better pilot and I think it should help to improve your skills. Uh, so if you are starting with FPV just now, you have a bit of money in your pocket for premium equipment, I'd say you should definitely go with DJI FPV uh, because it will immediately make your experience so much better. At the same time, I think it is perfect for professional use because you will be able to see things like never before. For example, imagine some kind of inspection. It's also perfect for cinematic because quality of image is simply remarkable. Obviously, it's not as good as GoPro, but it's very comparable with it. And I think it's the same or much better than Calyx uh, Turtle or Rankam Split have to offer. I almost forgot to mention that it has acceptable night performance, although it's not as good as Rankam Micro Eagle, which I think is pretty much the champion right now for this kind of application. It's still okay. Uh, obviously, it will be a bit of challenge to fly with it like with other cameras, but it handles it not that bad. Speaking about price, uh, it's not that cheap. It will be around $1,000 for you. But honestly, if you will compare it with uh, other similar premium quality components, the price will be very similar. I think uh, the main consideration here is this system is for you uh, depending on your application. And as I mentioned, I don't really think that if you are going to race, you necessarily have to jump on this uh, hype train unless it will become a standard and then you can uh, reconsider it later. Now I would like to show you a little bit uh, longer version of uh, FPV I recorded while flying uh, Kaluga with it. It was my maiden flight. I hope you will enjoy it and it will give you a little bit uh, better 
uh, idea about how this system performs. Uh, keep in mind that I was flying it in 25 milliwatts and the reception wasn't that great and I didn't even fly that far because in the area where I was flying there is a lot of uh, radio noise in general uh, and uh, lots of trees as well. So it's kind of like extreme case scenario so if you are going to be in the countryside, you will be able to fly miles, miles away. I think even with 25 milliwatts. Uh, at the same time, it offers different kind of power levels. So if you need so, you can always increase it and uh, have much better signal quality. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as me creating this video for you. Uh, I will have all the links to the products I showed in the description underneath of this video. Uh, please leave a comment below and let me know if you have any questions, suggestions. If you have your own personal experience with DJI FPV system and you would like to share it, please also consider subscribing to my channel and uh, hit the uh, bell notification button in order not to miss any future videos I'm going to upload. It really helps me to understand that you're enjoying what I'm making and it motivates me to create new videos for you. On that note, happy flying and see you later.